Hello, everyone. This is Leanne Allegretto, the service hydrologist at the National Weather Service office in Missoula, Montana. I am going to be bringing you a brief wrap up of the past water year covering October 1st, 2024 through September 30th, 2025. So what will be covered in this brief presentation is how did our region fare through the water year? Again, each water year lasts from October 1st through September 30th of the following year. Now, this presentation specifically will cover the data spanning western Montana into north central Idaho, specifically Idaho, Clearwater, and Lemhi counties. Uh, if you look at the image to the right, the Missoula, Montana Forecast Office of Responsibility is highlighted in the middle in white. And just to show you, that's what we cover here in this office. But... As you can see, we have neighbors that border us on all sides, and that's their areas as well. So just a, just a quick reminder of what we cover here at the Missoula Weather Forecast Office. We're going to go through how our region did through the water year, and we're going to review the stream flows, snowpack, and drought information, as well as what actually helped and hurt our region's numbers throughout the water year. So let's start with September 25, where we ended up at the end of the month. I do not have the graphic for September 30th, but I do have September 1st through September 29th. And on the left is the precipitation percent of normal through the month of September. And on the right is a graphic showing the temperature departure percent of normal. And as you can see, there's a lot of red. And a lot of red means a lot of dry and a lot of warm. So some places in Idaho, in the areas that we cover, did receive above 100% of normal of precipitation, and that kind of bled over into the westernmost areas of our forecast area in western Montana. However, the majority of locations, and what we have here is the Columbia River Basin in its entirety, but each individual basin within Idaho and Montana is shown here, or at least western Montana. And you can see a lot of red, yellow, orange. Those are all 90% of normal or lower. And that's for precipitation on the left. For our temperature departure, it is dark, dark red, which means it is above six degrees, warmer than normal for temperatures across the board in September. And that should come as no surprise to anyone who has been here for the past month. Now, how did we do for the entire water year? Again, we're missing the September 30th, 2025 data for this, but Overall, that doesn't change much. You can see that most locations in central Idaho and western Montana fell below that 100% of normal mark, even lower than 90% uh, of normal, with the exception of portions of the Flathead region of western Montana into extreme northwest Montana. Those did reach that 90 to 100%, 110% of normal, while a lot of areas in uh, like from about I-90 south in western Montana, we're about 50 to 70 percent of normal. And that also includes portions of Clearwater County into Idaho County. So overall, we would love to see more green and dark blues on this map, but it just did not happen this year. In fact, as of September 28th, 15 USGS river gauged sites we're reporting an all-time low stream flow for the day on September 28th. And as you can see, I have them listed out here. Again, this is just covering USGS river gauged sites west of the Continental Divide into north central Idaho. So factors that helped us, really, really helped us, was the July and August precipitation in 2025. And that's what I have pictured here. On the left is the monthly precipitation for July, and on the right, the monthly precipitation for August. And a lot of areas received an abundant amount of precipitation, well above normal, um, in the 110 to even above 130% of normal precipitation, with very localized exceptions to this. But those are key months, especially when it comes to drought, when it comes to fire weather related behavior, uh, a lot of stuff. So thankfully, we received quite a bit of precipitation in the July and August months. But again, it wasn't enough to make up for the entire water year. In fact, the factors that hurt us were several mostly dry and warm months. And I don't have them all pictured because I don't have enough room on these slides. But you can see that this is monthly precipitation for just a few months, October 2024 
January 2025, April 2025, and May 2025. And April and May are crucial months for water, suppri water supply. And we just did not hit the mark for precipitation in these months. And when they're scattered throughout the year like this, or, or especially throughout the water year, you tend to see its toll. It's, it's obvious in the amount of water that we ended up with at the end of all things here at the end of September. So when we see below 50% of normal for monthly precipitation for month after month after month after month, it, it really does take a toll on the water supply overall. And I encourage you to pause this presentation and really try to digest this on your at your own pace, but for the sake of time, I'll keep it pushing. And here's temperature departures. And again, I said several mostly dry and warm months. We had a lot of warm months. We did have a lot of cool months. They're not pictured here, but I wanted to emphasize that December 2024, March 2025, April, and again, May, those crucial months were overall slightly to well above normal for temperature departures of, for the entire month. And that's across the board. There are, again, localized exceptions to this. However, when it comes to water supply, and we rely on snowpack in this area to produce a lot of our water supply, if we don't have precipitation in those crucial months, to add to what we already have on the ground, and if what we already have on the ground is minimal and it's melting off at an accelerated rate, which it did in May of 2025, we see effects that last well into the summer and into the following months beyond summer. So this is just a glance at how things really stacked up and what contributed to our below normal seasonal water and uh, water supply and precipitation numbers for the water year. And of course, I just mentioned snowpack. I wanted to show the comparison of the end of April 2025 on the left and the end of May 2025 on the right, which shows just how much snow we melted out in the span of a month. And we lost a lot of snowpack and it was really warm. It was really dry. And what we did have for snowpack numbers, we lost very fast. And that's a recipe that we saw for the rest of the summer, even with that, um, with the rebound at the precipitation that we saw in the July and August months, it wasn't enough to make up for the losses that we had throughout the entire water year. Of course, all of this contributes to the drought status, soil moisture, uh, just all of our local agricultural experts can tell you that the drought effects have been felt very heavily across the area. And uh, this is data valid as of September 3rd. 23rd. However, this these graphics are updated weekly on Thursday mornings on drought.gov. So please refer back to drought.gov for the most up-to-date information. This will already be uh, history. It'll be expired by the time this presentation gets out. So always encouraged to seek out the most up-to-date information, and that includes drought.gov. I want to thank you for watching and thank you for your support. You can reach us 24 hours a day seven days a week, 365 days a year, no matter what, at the following information there on this slide. And I want to thank you again for, uh, for watching this and for your support.